you for uh, taking the time to view a video on my channel. Welcome. Um, if you like the content, please like and subscribe and share with your family and loved ones. Um, this is the second part to the uh, video um, um, to the series Bantu Hebrews in South Africa. Um, we'll be looking at the physical seed of Abraham in South Africa. So this is not about race, it's not about color, it's about truth, alright? It's about getting down to the truth of a matter. So, yes. The Bantu Israelites, uh, the Bantu Hebrews in South Africa, in the previous video, we saw that uh, there is a, a Jesus, according as according to Jesus' words, there is a people that call themselves Jews, but they are not. And we look at historical evidence to that effect. And we looked at what DNA records speak to that effect. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the physical seed of Abraham in South Africa. All right. <clears throat> so ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with your fathers. So this was being addressed to the Israelites, the Hebrews, the, the real Jews. So who are the children of the prophets? Who are the children of the covenant? That's what we're going to find out. Okay. So. <clears throat> excuse me. In um, this video. We'll be looking at three points. That the Hebrews were often mistaken as Egyptians. Firstly. Secondly. That the Hebrews normally fled to Africa. And thirdly. Bantu Hebrew people. Alright. And in this video. I'm going to be giving you historical biblical and scientific evidence to prove that the Bantu Hebrews are in South Africa. All right, let's take a look at that. So the Hebrews were often mistaken as Egyptians in the Bible. Okay, let's look at that. Genesis 42, chapter 8. All right, and, Jif and Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. So Joseph, being uh, a governor of um, Egypt at the time, dressed in their apparel and everything like that, he looked like the Egyptians, you know. He looked like them. If <coughs> the Egyptians were any other type of people, let's say they were Caucasian, Joseph would have stood out or he were some type of way he would have stood out and he they would have recognized him but they didn't recognize him joseph looked like the egyptians exodus chapter 2 verse 17 to 19 we have um from the king james version it says and the shepherds came and drove them away but moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock and when they came to Raal, their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. <clears throat> so Moses also uh, was thought to be, um, be an Egyptian. This was when he was running away from when he ran into the desert from Egypt after killing um the Egyptian you know he ran <clears throat> he ran to his would be father in law so this is what they initially thought of him they thought he was an Egyptian so genesis 40 uh sorry sorry, sorry. uh let's move forward acts chapter 21 verse 37 to 39 paul is also thought to have been an Egyptian and as paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? And the chief captain replied, Can you speak Greek? Art, thou, art not thou that Egyptian which 
before these days made an uproar. So they also thought Paul was an Egyptian. And he didn't look, he looked like an Egyptian. He didn't look like he could speak Greek. That's why the, 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 the chief captain replied, oh, can you actually speak Greek? All right. Here we have the vision of Daniel when he saw the Lord. All right. This is a description of the Hebrew people. This is a description of Jesus. His body also was like the barrel <clears throat> and his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as the lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass and his vo and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. So his arms and his feet, like this is dropping hints, y'all. Like it's dropping like some serious, serious, serious like information here. Jesus' arms and feet in color were bras. Who's like, mm -hmm, like, wait, now it's kumbasako. Is it not bras? It's bras, guys. Yes. Let's go. Revelation chapter 1, 14 to 15. Also, John had a, vis a, v a vision of the Lord, and it describes him. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Eh? His hairs, the head, his head, ne? and the hair on the head was like wool. Like, is that not like ours when they say, it's what, darling, what, what, good cheeks, la pan. Um, our hair is like wool. I don't know any other nation that... <laughs> that um has hair like wool you know and white as snow and his uh, and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass again the feet fine brass brass the color of it as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters yeah guys huh like, hmm, let's move on. This is what the Egyptians looked like at that time, guys. This is what the Egyptians looked like. So if the Hebrews uh, look like the Egyptians, should it not be like these movies that portray um the gospel back in those days because even Paul was considered uh, uh, was thought to have been an Egyptian to understand Paul himself looked like an Egyptian like this okay this is a woman but so let's look at the Hebrews this is an ancient like this is what the ancient Hebrews look like guys does not even look like a Madrid or something guys no mama conro <laughs> Yeah, another relic. Yeah, well, in Jabaya corner, guys, really. So let's go to the next point. Hebrews normally fled to Africa. We can see that in the Bible. So let's see. Genesis chapter 12, verse 10. And there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there. <laughs> For the famine was grievous in the land. Okay. Abraham went into Egypt. Matthew chapter 2 verse 13. And when they departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Even Joseph and Mary had to hide Jesus, guys, in Egypt, in Africa. And all the people, both small and great, and the captains of the armies arose and came to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldeans. This was at the time of the Syrian invasion in Second Kings, you know. And really, like, if you are in trouble, think about it. If people are looking for you, 
if there's like the worst gangsters or something that look out people that are looking for you you would not run into people that don't look like you because you're just gonna stand out you know like if i wanted to go hide as a black person nah, i wouldn't go to Santon to go and hide or i wouldn't go like a e- kappa to go hide in in at camps bay you know or somewhere where it's very more white uh uh dominated areas you would go to Ekasi or Emakaya because they look like you, you know. That's the, like the same goes. Um, um, mm, what is that saying? Um, oh, I will remember it. But you would actually go hide um, uh, amongst people that look like you, you know. So um, this is uh, this is basically um, okay. This is from Flavius Josephus. Um, he's a Hebrew um, scholar. Um, yeah, he's a, a, a Hebrew historian, and he wrote literature basically on what uh, happened um, at the fall of Jerusalem. So he wrote, Josephus wrote, General Vespian and his son Caesar Titus fought against the Jews. Millions of Jews fled into Africa, among other places, fleeing from Roman persecution and starvation during the siege. You know, they fled into Africa, even at the time at the fall of Jerusalem that was prophesied by Jesus. So let's look at the Bantu Hebrew people. All right. So according to the um, Wikipedia, né? the definition, Negro, literally meaning black, was used by the Spanish and Portuguese as a simple description to refer to the Bantu peoples that they encountered. So Negro people are Bantu people. So the people that are in America are, in essence, are actually Bantu of the Bantu tribes. They are part of the Bantu tribes, right? The Zondervan Bible Dictionary ne, defines Ham as the youngest son of Noah born probably about 96 years before the flood and one of the eight sons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, black people, all right? And that actually also means the Africans, okay? Not the Negroes. And the word Negroes also uh, comes from the word Niger, and therefore it speaks to the Bantu tribes. So not Ham is not the progenitor of the Bantu tribes. Basically they're saying the Bantus are not Hamites. But the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans and Canaanites, Canaanites, they are Africans. Okay. So here we know we are not bantus are not part of ham so the issue now guys goes to the question that where do the bantu people come from of which son of ham do the bantu people tra- uh, uh come from because after the flood the world was new and it was just them so if Um, Japheth is the progenitor from the previous video of the Jews that we see today you know where do the Bantus come from you know where are actually the children of Jacob 
Where did they disappear to? If they are not the Jews that we see today, where are the children? Where did the uh, the children of Jacob disappear to? Those tribes, where did they disappear to? All right. So let's read. Um, this is the book from Babylon to Timbuktu by Ralph Windsor. He writes, many other Jews fled to the areas where Rome did not have any jurisdiction. This was to the region of the south, the Sahara Desert and the Sudan. Grizzle says, Grizzel says, such is the explanation of how the Sahara Desert first acquired Jewish tribes toughened by a fighting tradition, you know, for example, Shaka Zulu, and possessed of physical characteristics, blacks, which it is said still make them approximately very closely the original Jewish population of Palestine. When North and Eastern Africa had amassed over a million Jews, these Jews began a continuous migration to the region of the Niger River. The Jewish migrations went on with great frequency about 300 AD and they continued with the utmost regularity for 1200 years. He continues by tracing the migration from Kordofan, going west to Dafur, Lake Chad, Kanu, and then to the countries of the Niger River. You see, so uh, Ralph Windsor is telling us, you know, that the Jewish people eventually ended up at the Niger River, where the Bantu people is said to originate. Just a few little bit of a little bit of insects, yeah, well, because sometimes you must, yeah, well, this uh, get also from white people that also saw people that are not of your color that saw such things. So Thomas B. Jenkins, the author of Amazulu, the Zulus, um, noted such things, and this was in 1884, right? Language, the Zulu says Bishop Calloway, is a highly elaborated language, much more so than the Hebrew, which in some respect it resembles. Chiefs summon their wives to the original hut. Common men visit each house separately. If a chief's daughter is seduced, the offender must pay the whole dowry as in Levitical law, whether the father give her in marriage or not. So, all right. I actually have like um, other references of people. Like, sure. Let's look at um, a source. Another source says um, the Bantu peoples had so far degenerated when found by modern Europeans that they had no written speech, but they, but very little is found in the way of picture writing. Yet the Zulu Kafir language, to which we may refer as a representative Bantu tongue, is in both form and content just such a type of speech as we would expect to, de- to be developed from the ancient Hebrew. Uh, John Colenso, who lived between who lived from 1814 to 1883 also saw such a a, a distinction. Um, Colenso was convinced that the the two Zulu names for God embraced perfectly the notions of the divine contained in in the Hebrew words Elohim and Yahweh. So close indeed were the resemblance, according to Colenso, that frequently he suggested that anyone who wanted to really understand the Bible had best study Zulu customs. Zulu habits and even the nature of their country so nearly correspond to those of the ancient Israelites that the very scenes are brought continually 
as it were before their eyes and vividly re realized in a practical point of view. Practically everything about the Zulus, from their lunar calendar to the order of religious feasts, seem to reflect an Israelite past. The Zulus keep his annual feast and observes the new moons as the old Hebrew did. Hmm? Another source is um, Captain Francis Garner. Garner reported, oh, he lived from 1794 to 1851. Francis Garner reported that Zulu religious beliefs were quite simply a remnant of pre-Christian Judaism. Right? And G.R. Peppercorn, the magistrate of Pafana location, observed to the Native Affairs Commission that a general type of customs and laws of the Amazulu may be found in the early history of the Hebrews. He suggested that any European who wanted to understand Zulu customs had only read the Old Testament. All right. Isn't that interesting? Henry Francis Finn, who lived from 18... 03 to 1861, left uh, behind a diary recorded from 1824 to 1836. He writes, I was surprised to find a considerable, considerable, uh, little, what am I right, what am I saying? I was surprised to find a considerable resemblance between many of the Zulu customs and those of the Jews. These include war offerings, sin offerings, proprietary offerings, festivals of first fruits, period of uncleanness, uncleanness on the de decease of uh, relatives and touching uh, of the dead, circumcision, rules regarding chastis 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 rejection of swine flesh. Finn concluded in the usual way of hermetic hypothesis that in view of the nature of a resemblance of many of their customs to those of the ancient Jews as, dis as prescribed under the Levitical priesthood, I am led to form the opinion that the Zulu tribes have been very superior to what they are at the present time. Those are some of the sources that are out there, guys. You can Google those people. Um, yeah, please, please. Let's move on. So, um, we're talking about the Bantus in South Africa. Richard Henry, this is an article I came across uh, on PR distribution. So he explains the whole DNA set up of the children of Israel. Richard Henry has proof that the descendants of the black slaves who left West Africa are the descendants of the biblical Israelites. He says that people falsely believe that the paternal Hoplo group J is the Hoplo group that came from Abraham, but Henry states that E1B1A is the haplogroup group that not only Jacob had, but also his 12 sons. Another thing that people are not aware of is that the country of Israel sits on the African tectonic plate and has plants and animals that are of African species. Israel is in Africa. Any male, regardless of race, who has the paternal haplogroup E1B1A is a true descendant of the biblical Israelites, but most of the men in the world who have the haplogroup E1B1A are black men, says Henry. E1B1A is mostly found in black men who live in Canada, America, the Caribbean, the, uh, Latin America, Europe, and Africa. A paternal haplogroup is passed from father to son, and a maternal haplogroup is passed from 
mother to daughter and from mother to son, since males get two haplogroups, while females only get one haplogroup. Only men will be found with the haplogroup E1B1A if a woman's father has this harp but if a woman's father has this haplogroup, then she is an Israelite as well. Jacob passed the haplogroup E1B1A to his twelve sons who became the nations of Israel. The Bantu males in Africa have the haplogroup E1B1A in abundance and are the descendants of the biblical Israelites. Scientists have claimed that there was a Bantu expansion in Africa. The reality is that the Bantu expansion was the scattering of the Israelites on the African continent. The Ashkenazi Jews are not the descendants of Abraham unless they have the paternal haplogroup E1B1A, which they hardly ever have. They use the haplogroups most common to them and force it upon us as proof that they are the descendants of the biblical Israelites, which deceives many people, says Henry. The Lemba tribe of Africa, and these, this Lemba tribe are, is a tribe in, in, in Zimbabwe and um, just here, no, Limpopo, just here, part of us, Omake, Zimbabwe, just Zimbabwe, yeah. The Lemba tribe of Africa claim that they are descended from the biblical Israelites and claim that they fled Israel during the brutal Roman occupation um, that was prophesied by Jesus, the fall of Jerusalem. They settled in Yemen before moving into Africa. They have E1B1 among their males at a high percentage. If you go to GEDmatch and choose the MDLP project calculators. It will show you that those with the E1B1A haplogroup have ancestry that goes back to Yemen. I even searched the kit numbers of those with haplogroup J and they did not go to Yemen. There is a ton of evidence in the Bible that many of the Israelites the ancient Israelites traveled to the African continent and lived there, says Richard. All right. So he says that if you look at the top column right there, this is, I just did a very quick search, Nji, and just see the top column there on Wikipedia. It gives us E1B1A. All right. That is the... DNA of J uh, Jacob and his 12 sons, okay? The one next to it, that E1B1B, that is the DNA of the people of Ham, the true Africans, the Hamites, the Egyptians, the Ethiopians, the Libyans, Canaanites. They have that DNA, the original Africans. So please go down to South Africa, which is the second last all right, and then just see between the African DNA and the Hebrew DNA, which one is more? We are of Hebrew descent. That NC, if you look at the language group, Southern Bantu, the NC there, it means Niger Congo. We are of the Niger Congo people and us Bantus, because there's a whole lot of us that are here. We do have the tra we have the DNA in our blood so hebrews welcome to that reality we are hebrews so yeah this is what basically the african continent kind of looks like i'm not sure what it should look like you know it's funny that you know satan used the white man to bring the uh, borders between us so that he could eventually establish this hatred between us and and the xenophobia when in actual fact we are all <laughs> of the seed of abraham the physical seed of abraham you know we're busy fighting each other than the he yes we should be fighting satan instead of you know and the dark forces that he has put out there to oppress us instead of fighting each other there's no need for the xenophobia 
So, uh, beloveds, uh, this is the realization and this is the evidence to the fact that um, we are Hebrews. I mean, those with, you know, you know those who want to go and do a DNA, go and do a DNA test and prove, you know, and set yourself free. Um, but um, biblically, it has been prophesied. Jesus did say that there are those who would call themselves Jews, but they be not. And here today, the truth is coming out, you know. Yeah, it's really coming out. So I actually hope this um, show video was enlightening. I hope um, it was a blessing. Please like and subscribe and share with your family and your loved ones. And do a, I encourage everyone just to do a further research, you know, and to find out, you know, I've given you more than two or three witnesses because the Bible says, out of two or three witnesses, a word shall be established. So, um, yeah, let's live in truth, guys. Um, thank you for taking the time to view this video. And I hope the Lord bless, uh, Lord blesses you. Um, Tawazani, Nipile. Um,